week I thought we could have a chat about how to make the perfect first class set of university lecture notes. Now, I've been a student, so I've sat in the lecture theatre and I've wondered, should I be writing down everything the academic says? Should I be making notes on my laptop? Should I be handwriting? Should I be using a colour coded system? Should I be writing up my notes again after the lecture? There are so many considerations when it comes to making your lecture notes. So some people have a very set style of how they like to keep their lecture notes. And if you've got that, that is brilliant. If you already know your lecture style, I'll put a link up here and jump straight into my video on open book examinations because you're ready to roll. However, if you're still wondering how to make a really nice set of lecture notes, let's have a think about what you are actually trying to get out of the lecture. So the whole point of the lecture is that somebody at the front of the room is trying to convey information to you that will help your learning and understanding of the topic that you're studying. You're looking to come out of that lecture with a set of notes that will help remind you of the key points, the key facts, and the key concepts that you need to be aware of and to be able to understand and discuss. So I'm a nuclear physics lecturer, so I will talk mainly from the STEM perspective, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics. I lived with housemates who were English literature students. I think if you're doing a literature or language or maybe politics or economics based degree, your note taking might be slightly different. But on the STEM side, so the science, technology, engineering and mathematics, your lectures will fall into different categories. Some lecturers will give you a very comprehensive handout at the start of the class. Basically, all of their notes will be on that handout. Everything they're going to discuss will be there. Now, another type of lecturer might give you a handout with some spaces. So they'll give you a handout which has maybe 50 to 70% of the content in, but they'll deliberately leave some gaps where you have to listen to the lecture and to write in the key equations or the key terms. And then other academics will give you no lecture notes at all. So you've got to completely make your own set of notes based on what they're saying. You can write down exactly what they're saying or you can try to shorthand their ideas onto your notepad. So we've got these different styles that academics will be using to convey the information at the front of the class. And based on the academic style, you might need to adapt the way that you take your notes. The ones that I really didn't like when I was a student is I really didn't enjoy the lectures where you had the slides and you had 70% of the material but that the academic had left spaces for you to effectively fill in the gaps. That used to really annoy me as a student. Now I'm sure for some of you you really love that style of lecture and if so that's absolutely brilliant. It just it just wasn't my thing. It felt like I was listening to the lecture and just waiting for them to say the key equation or a particular buzzword so I could write it in the gap. My preferred style of lecturing when I was a student was I really liked the academic to be handwriting their lecture at the front of the classroom. For me, I found they rented a pace then that I could follow, I could keep up with and I could write my own notes exactly at the same time as they were writing their notes. It becomes a bit harder if you've got an academic who's got a little bit dodgy handwriting because then you're having to try to work out all the time what they're putting on the board. Is it a U? Is it a V? And it makes it a little bit harder to follow. But generally, I enjoyed the lectures where I could handwrite at the same speed as the person who was teaching me the material. And as a student, you're having to accommodate and try to do the best set of lecture notes you can based on the lecturing style of the academic that's teaching you. One thing I would say about lecture notes is don't worry about making them beautiful, worry about making them readable. So when I first started taking my lecture notes I went in with all the different coloured pens, I had highlighters, I had a ruler, I was going to make them all look beautiful um, and very quickly I realised I just needed to take functional notes. So at most I would have two pens, I would have my biro that I was writing with or my fountain pen and I'd have a coloured pen that I would be using to kind of draw boxes around things and highlight key points. But what I did do was I always had a referencing system on the top of my lecture notes. So if you look at my lecture notes it always has my initials at the top, it has the date of the lecture, it has the lecture number, so where we are in the lecture series and the lecture topic. I used to always keep my notes on A4 paper, so I'd have A4 lined paper, I'd handwrite my notes onto that paper and then at the end of the day I would whip them out of my notepad and I would click them into the relevant file for that subject. That for me worked best. I know some of my friends had one big notebook 
and they wrote all of their lectures into the same notebook. And that for them worked really well because they had all their notes in one place. I didn't like that so much. I liked to be able to section my notes out and to be have a folder for each of the individual topics that I was studying that semester and have my notes just for that particular topic in each of those folders. It's, it's hard. If you've got a two hour lecture and then a break and then another one hour lecture, it's really difficult to keep your focus and keep your lecture note taking at a high standard. But if you can, it really, really will help you when it comes to exam time. There is nothing more frustrating than going back to your notes and not being able to read them. Because what's the point in making them? If you can't read them, you know, they're really not going to help you when it comes to revision. So try to keep it so that you can read your handwriting, try not to be lazy with symbols, try to keep your notes written in a logical order. Um, sometimes people like to section off their page, so they'll have like equations on one side and the kind of concepts and ideas on the other side. That didn't work for me, I just used to write it as a solid kind of block going down the page. I did used to space it out, so I wouldn't have all my text bunched up at the top of the page of notes. I'd give some space around it. That's a really good tip in case your lecturer suddenly jumps back and wants to add a point to one of their earlier statements. And as an academic, I sometimes do this as well. And I'm sorry to my students because I'm sure it must really annoy you when I do it. But sometimes you're at the front of the lecture theatre and you're running through a derivation and then you get to the end and then you suddenly realise that you've forgotten to say one of the key assumptions. And so you'll scoot back up to the top and you'll say that assumption. And sometimes I can hear the students groaning because I know they haven't left space on that bit of paper for them to add that assumption in that I've just stated. So if you can, leave a bit of space around your notes. Um, it also helps if a lecturer wants to go back and make a correction to something they've said or an error has creeped in somewhere. I had a really cool microscope based lecturer who used to draw diagrams of microscopes. So if you've ever studied scanning electron microscopes or atomic force microscopes, they're quite complicated bits of equipment. And he used to start his lecture in the middle of the blackboard and draw out the telescope or draw out the microscope that we were looking at. And then he'd just add bits and he'd just pull down extra boards and add bits all over the place. And as a student, it was so frustrating because of course I couldn't extend my bit of paper to add in all these extra bits that he was just drawing on his board. Um, so that was quite a challenging set of lecture notes that I tried to keep. But yeah, in general, lots of space, keep your notes readable and limit your use of colours and fancy pens actually in the lecture theatre. Just get the content and the ideas down. Make sure after your lecture you put your lecture notes somewhere safe. Don't just stick them at the bottom of your bag or chuck them in the corner of your room. Take a couple of moments to actually file your lecture notes because you'll be so grateful you did when it comes to exam and revision time. And then when you get to revision time, hopefully you'll be looking at a nice set of well-ordered lecture notes and that will really help you as you prepare for your exam. Key things to make sure you have written down in your lecture notes are equations, parameters, write down the units. There's nothing more irritating than doing a question and answering it in an exam and losing a couple of marks because you've got the units incorrect. Write down any concepts or theories that the lecturer mentions because they might be ones you want to go and reread a bit more about. And if the lecturer directs you to any chapters in notebooks, they're a good thing to note down. So, you know, sometimes an academic will say, if you want to know more about this or do practice questions, turn to page 50 of the textbook. You know, that's a really good hint from the lecturer teaching you to go and look at those tutorial questions because they'll help with your understanding. So yeah, lecture notes, lots of good fun. Obviously you're now keeping your lecture notes and you're working from home. So you'll be doing online working, I suspect, for most of us. Um, but I would still say use the same principles. Even if you're watching the lecture online, I'd still always recommend keeping a really good readable set of university lecture notes. So anyway, I hope that helps. If you're starting to think about exams, um, I'll put a link at the end if you're facing an open book exam. Um, as I said earlier, if you've got to go to online lectures, I'll put a link for that as well. And I'll be back on Thursday, so I'm doing two videos a week, one on Monday, one on Thursday. And at the moment, we're focusing mainly on kind of undergraduate, postgraduate activities and stuff relevant to the end of your semester. Um, but in the future, we'll discuss some other stuff relating to university. So have a lovely week. I'll see you a bit later on and good luck with the lecture note taking. Bye.